Hello and welcome to the final episode of this module, the episode where we'll get to see the final result. Not only we're going to see the training of our DC GAND, but also we're going to see what it's capable of in terms of art. We're going to see the generated images of our DC GAND in this folder results here that so far is empty, as you can see. So this folder is empty, it's going to be populated with all the fake images of our DC GANs. We're going to check if it looks like something. So if you're ready, we'll start by printing some interesting information that we would like to see during the training. And that is, for example, the epoch, how many epochs out of 25, and also the step that would be nice to see the steps reached because there are actually a lot of steps in the data loader mini batches. So let's print all this. And mostly what we need to do also is to save the images in this results folder. And then after all this, we'll be good to start the show. So let's do this. Let's quickly do those print. So I'm going to put in quotes. Well, first the epochs into brackets. So I'm going to add a percent D out of percent D because you know, this first percent D will correspond to the epoch. This second percent D will correspond to 25. So, you know, we'll see like the epoch reached out of 25. Then we're going to do something similar for the steps. So I'm adding another pair of square brackets, percent D out of percent D. So this time percent D here will correspond to the step I and percent D will correspond to the number of elements in data loader that is len data loader. All right. And then after this, that is for each step of each epoch, we will print the loss of the discriminator, which will be here since it's a float, we're going to add some percent dot four F to have a float with four decimals. Then we're going to add the same for the loss of the generator. So I just need to replace loss D here by loss G. There we go. Almost over. Now we need to get out of the quotes add some percent and then in some parentheses, we input the names of the variables that correspond to these values here, the percent D's and the percent 0.4 F's. All right. So the first value that corresponds to this first percent D is epoch. So here we have to input first epoch. Then the second percent D here corresponds to 25. So we input 25. Then the third percent D here corresponds to the step I. So that's exactly I. Then the fourth percent D here corresponds to the number of mini batches. That is len data loader. So here I'm adding len data loader. And then finally, we have to input the variable names for our two losses corresponding to 0.4 F and 0.4 F. So the first one is the loss of the discriminator and the variable for that is, so I'm adding a comma and the variable for that is of course, E R R D. But then to get the value itself, we need to take the data attribute and then in some brackets, we add zero. That will get us exactly what we want. That is the value of the error of the discriminator. Perfect. Almost done. We need to do the same for the generator. So comma the same and we replace ERRD by ERRG. And perfect. I think our print is ready. Great. Now, as you can see, I would like to save the real images and the generated images of the mini batch every 100 steps. So now what we're going to do is to make an if condition that will save the images every 100 steps. And the trick to do that is do an if condition and then I percent 100 equal equal zero. That's the rest of the division of I by 100. So if the rest of the division of I by 100 is zero, that means that I is divided by 100. And so this way we get the step every 100 steps. All right. So every 100 steps, what do we do? Well, first we're going to save the real images. So to do this, I'm going to take V utiles, which is the shortcut name we gave to torchvision.utils that allow to save some images with torchvision. 
an advanced library of Torch for computer vision. So VUtils, and then we're going to use the save underscore image function to save the different images, that is, the real images on which our model was trained, and then the fake images. So we're going to start with the real images, and therefore what we have to input here is our batch of real images that we called real. That's the first argument. And then for the second argument, we need to specify in quotes the name of the path leading to the location where we want to save the real images. And this path is going to be percent %s, which is a string that will refer to the root then dot slash result, because the results folder here is a subfolder of our repo, the root folder. So percent %s, then slash, and then after the slash, we need to give the name to the PNG file that will contain these real images. And we're going to call them real underscore samples dot png. All right, and then some percent and in some double quotes, we need to specify the string attached to this percent s and that is dot slash results because the name of the folder where we want to save the images is our results folder. And this dot here corresponds to the root that is this working directory folder. All right. And then we can add a third argument, which is just to normalize. And this argument is normalize. And we have to set it equal to true. Perfect. So we saved our batch of real images contained in real here. And now we're going to do the same for the fake images. So we're going to get these fake images by calling our net G network again, to which we feed the noise random vector. So we're just doing it again to get the fake images. And now we can save them. So I'm just going to copy this line, paste it right below. And now I just need to replace a few things. First, this time we're not saving the real image, but fake dot data. That's what contains the fake images. Then here we keep percent %s for the name of the path leading to the folder where we save our images, but then we're not going to call them this time real samples, but fake underscore samples underscore epoch underscore. And here I'm going to put the number of the epoch when the fake images are saved. And to do this, I'm going to specify here a double with three integers. So percent %o3d and then dot png. All right. And then since I added a new variable here with the percent %o3d, then besides the path of the results and double quotes, I need to add the variable corresponding to O3D. And according to you, what is it? Well, that's of course the epoch. So that way we'll get the fake images and we'll know from which epoch they are coming. All right. We will know in which epoch they were produced by the generator. Perfect. And then I'm keeping normalize equals true. All right, and now we're ready to watch the final result. And so if you're ready, now it's time for the show. And there we go. I just executed. I selected all the code and pressed command or control plus enter. And there we go. We have started the training. So as you can see, this is the first epoch and the first steps with zero, one, two, three, four. And for each of the step in each epoch, we get indeed the loss of the discriminator and the loss of the generator. So now it's going to take a while. It's actually going to take several hours on my computer. I'm going to let my computer do all this work for me. We're not going to watch the whole training. And at the end of the training, I'll see you back and we will see the fake images generated by our DC GANs and we'll see if it looks like something. So let's let this run and I'll see you at the end of the training. All right, the training is over. It actually took more time than I thought when I woke up after a long night of sleep. Well, it was still not over, so I guess it took more than eight hours on my computer. Indeed, I don't sleep anymore three hours per day. I noticed it was bad for life expectancy, and I still want to be able to make some courses for your children and grandchildren. But as long as we have the final results, that's all good. So I'm going to show them to you now. And we'll see if we can call our deep convolutional Gantt a great artist. 
All right, so before I show you the first fake samples, I would like to show you the real samples just to see on which images, real images, our computer vision model learned to generate some fake images. So these are the images, all good. Now let's see what it was capable of creating. All right, so let's start with the first fake samples. Nothing special here. We cannot call it art at all. But then what about the second one? The second one is already better. The second one looks more like something, but still, it still looked like some kind of smoke. Except for this one, maybe, that looks like a mountain, but I think we'll get better than that. Then, samples number two. So, the numbers here correspond to the epoch, so that was given at the epoch 0, epoch 1, epoch 2, epoch 3, until epoch 24, so 25 epoch in total. And this one, this one is actually pretty good. We start to see something here. We still need a bit of imagination to figure out what's inside the image. Here I seem, for example, to see some kind of a duck on, a, on the sea or the ocean. I don't know if you see the same thing. Well, maybe my imagination is playing me some tricks, but I can start to see something here. Let's look at the third fake samples. So the fake images of the third epoch. All right, definitely better here. Here we can see a human, I guess it's a human. Here I think I see a squirrel. I don't know if you agree. Okay, much better. Let's look at the other ones. Much better here as well. All right, let's look at number six. Much better here. We can see it's better and better each time. I don't know if you agree, but to me the fake images really start to look like some real images. Even if it's not perfectly net, it's still a little bit blur, but Still, we can see some objects here. All right, let's look at number 10, for example, to see if it's already much better. Yes, it looks pretty good. Let's have a look at number 15. Still very good. So perhaps you didn't need that many epoch. Perhaps you could try to do the training with five or up to 10 epochs. But definitely, after a certain number of epoch, we see some great results. And here it's even more visible than before, even more clear. And these are pretty cool images. We can see some nice colors now. So I would dare calling this model an artist. Maybe not Picasso, but definitely a better artist than me. So that's pretty cool. And that's actually the end of this module. Congratulations for having implemented the deep convolutional GANs. That was definitely not kid stuff. You coded almost 150 lines of code. So well done. Awesome job, you not only implemented the deep convolutional GANs, but also you smashed the three modules of this course where, keep in mind, you implemented some cutting-edge AI models. I remind that the SSD is the state-of-the-art model in object detection. It beats the faster RCNN and YOLO. So at the time I'm speaking, and I hope this course will last, but at the time I'm speaking, you did implement a state-of-the-art model in computer vision and deep learning. So really, 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 you can be proud of yourself. Keep up that great work and great passion for the coming courses and some more modules. This adventure is definitely not over. We will learn so much more. We are dedicated instructors, really happy to share our knowledge. So there will be more. And until then, enjoy machine learning, enjoy deep learning, enjoy AI, and mostly enjoy computer vision.